Hey everybody, Trout here at BD Outdoors. We're at Seaside Market, which is in Cardiff by the Sea. I've been doing recipes for the site now. I'm up to almost 30, and we've gotten a lot of good feedback and a lot of requests for videos. And the main thing is we're gonna go from beginner to intermediate to advanced, so there's really gonna be something for everyone. So my goal today is to do a recipe. It's gonna be an ahi poke. It's a good starter dish, and it's gonna be great. Tuna season's already here, and this is gonna be a good start for you guys. All right, so like I said, we're gonna do a poke dish today, and we were fortunate enough to get some beautiful tuna from Tommy Gomes down at uh, Tunaville. When we do these dishes, and I'm gonna tell you this, you guys are gonna hear it from me over and over and over. It is so crucial to dry your fish. Whether you're doing something raw, whether you're searing it, any type of preparation, you're gonna want to dry the fish. If you've got the wet fish, if you try to sear it, it's gonna steam. If you're going to do a raw preparation, there's gonna be excess liquid, okay? It's really simple. You're really just taking it and putting it in a paper towel, and that's it, okay? If you get good fish, you shouldn't have to wash it in the sink. I don't really recommend doing a lot of fresh water on, on a saltwater fish. If you have to, it's not the end of the world. Just go through that drying process and making sure that it's good to go. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cube our fish. Poke means to cube or to cut. You know, I was really lucky to live on Oahu for about four years. I learned a lot about food, culture, water, everything that has to do with the islands. And um, poke is a really, really big part of tradition and what they eat. I really fell in love with it. There are a million ways to do it. I'm gonna do a pretty straightforward approach to this today. It's really focused on salt, sesame oil, if you want a little soy sauce, sesame seeds, onions are a big part of it. You know, that's kind of the, the core. From there, you can uh, edit, add, subtract, and whatever flavors you like. So, I'm gonna take the fish, we're gonna lay it out here. Really try to keep a clean workstation too, especially with dealing with raw fish. Clean is good. Actually, if you have something to clean the blade when you're doing all of these cuts, keep whiting and uh, just making sure that you have a, a process. I like to go one inch cubes. You know, a lot of people here, bigger, smaller, that's up to you. I like a little bit bigger of a, of a, of a chunk and I'm cutting across the grain, right? If you go with the grain, it's, it's gonna fall apart a little bit. So try to, try to square it up, right? And just do simple cuts. And I think after a couple of runs of this, you guys will kind of figure out what texture and what size you want to go with. Completely up to you. It does taste the same at the finish line. So you do not have to use tuna, you guys. You do not have to use tuna. I mean, again, you're just cubing fish, any type of fish you want to have in a raw preparation. I love hamachi. You know, any type of uh, yellowtail is delicious. All the tunas. Even fish like uh, skipjack, things like bonita, things that people kind of look down upon for some reason. If you get the bloodline out of those fish, that's really the only thing that can kind of make things go sideways. But if you get the bloodline out of the fish, the bonita, the skipjack, all these different fish that used to be considered trash, really, are amazing. So give those a go as well. And I try to move fast when I do the poke. Keeping it cold is, is a huge, part of it. I mean, anytime I have something that's raw, I think this goes for all of us. If you get a bunch of warm chunks, it's kind of a kind of a turn off. So keeping it cold is going to be the best way to present it. So going on to the, the actual uh, ingredients here, uh, like I said, the very basics are, you know, your sesame oil, your salt, and your onions. And I think everything goes from there. So we've got the cubes. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna prep, okay? I'm just gonna be cutting, slicing. When you do these, there's definitely uh, a way that I like to do it. Again, there's no real rules, but I've eaten a lot of poke and just you know, learning from the best, learning how to uh, make it in Hawaii. It's just so good this way. It's about how thin it is and the size and shape, and it's just like this, it's preference, but I'm just gonna do it my way and you can take it from there. It's gonna be a sweet, Maui onion. Uh, we've got this. Basically, I cut it into quarter moons. I'll show you how to cut it. This you want really thin. Anytime you get straight raw onion, it can be very strong, 
but if you cut it very thinly, if it mixes in with the sauces and the salt and everything, it really adds to it. Along those same lines, the green onion is huge. This is, uh, I love green onion, really. You can use the white and the green parts, uh, probably go heavy on the green parts since we already have uh, the regular onion here. One thing that I'm gonna mince here is, is a little ginger. It's pickled ginger. This is one of the wild card ones. This is something that may not always be in regular poke, but to me, it's got a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of bite, and if you mince it up very, very finely, it's almost gonna be like you can't tell. It's just a subtle taste. So I'm gonna start out by just cutting it in half here. This is a little trick. This part right here is attached. I always leave that where it is, and I'm just gonna go ahead and cut the top here almost all the way through, and then I'm just gonna peel that. And by leaving that little base, it's gonna keep it all together and keep it from uh, falling off. Makes it a lot easier to cut into smaller pieces. I always start right in the middle, go about halfway up. So basically this is, is divided in half, and then we're gonna go as thinly as possible. So what's gonna happen is you can see that that's a quarter, okay? So now you're not getting huge chunks and halves and holes, you just don't wanna overdo it. You wanna let the fish do all the magic for you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do these quarter moons. Very fine. and we're just gonna break these up, okay? And you wanna break them up because you don't wanna accidentally get, you know, something like that in there. So we're just gonna break all these up. And if you see any chunks, you can leave them out, but this should be just about right. And then we move on to the green onion. If the ends are a little bit, a little bit shot, just cut these ends off here. Hopefully you guys have a compost at home. You can take all this stuff and go straight to the compost. Another little trick, if you actually stick these in water, after a week, the green onion will come back, put them in the dirt, and you'll have uh, new green onions. So with the white part, you also want this thin because this is a lot stronger flavor. Okay, so I'm eyeballing this now. This is a lot of green onion. I like, I like the green onion, but I'm gonna probably use about two thirds of this. And the other thing is you can, you can always add, but you can't take out. So what I tell people is start with the basics. If you taste it, you can always add more. So with the ginger, again, this isn't a critical ingredient. It is pretty strong, so I go light on the ginger and you're just gonna wanna cut through it a couple times. I try to go for the, the stuff that's unbleached or undyed. A lot of it's pink and all the dyes and stuff. The true color of it, it's, it actually should just be a light color like this. So that's about tablespoon and change, maybe tablespoon and a half. So again, sprinkle that in. And that's good for our, our base ingredients here. So right here, we're at the level where we have the tuna, the sweet Maui onion, the green onion, and the minced pickled ginger, okay? Okay, so we're at the point now we're gonna mix our wet ingredients, and this is pretty easy because we only have two. I've got this sesame oil. Use roasted sesame oil. There's a lot of different grades. This stuff is strong, okay? Go easy, like I said, you can always add, but you can't take out. This is just baker and olive, sesame oil, really good stuff. And then I'm going with this bluegrass soy sauce. Tommy sells this at Tunaville. Also intense, so with these, you need less than what you usually use, and just, just mix it together, and you can always add more. So I'm gonna just do, start with about a tablespoon of the soy sauce. And I'm gonna do about the same with the sesame.
Okay, and the reason I do the, the sesame and the, and the soy sauce separately is if you mix it for about a minute, it's gonna emulsify, which means it's gonna thicken and it won't separate. So when you're putting it over all the fish, it's both of the liquids really combined together. And I'm just gonna add, I'm not even gonna add all of it. I'm just gonna start with that. And I'm just gonna give it a toss. When I'm mixing it here, you can you just really want to coat. This isn't a big chop up type of thing. Everything's already done and cut. So we're really just making sure that we coat all this. And if you over overdo it, you're you're really just gonna be breaking up the beautiful pieces of fish. All right, we're almost done here. We're really just gonna finish with our dry ingredients. Uh, again, the big one is is salt. I use Kind of a flake salt. This is a cypress flake salt. You can use regular salt, but uh, salt is a really important component in poke. And you know, the flake, it's just got a good texture. It's big, but it's not like hard as a rock. And you don't want to go too heavy on the salt because remember the soy sauce is already pretty intense. I usually do a little bit of the black sesame and the white sesame. And then the only other ingredient that's kind of outside the box is this is actually dehydrated onion. They also sell this in garlic. You can do uh, dehydrated garlic chips. And it's just something a little different, but it doesn't take over the whole dish. The very last thing, togarashi. It's just, uh, it's a spice, but it's a very fine grain. And I like spicy food. This isn't mandatory by any means, but this is uh, really good just to add a little bit of heat. And that's it. So I'm just gonna spin this one more time, really not overdoing it. I'm just kind of lifting and flipping it over. And you can see, for the most part, this is a pretty simple, simple preparation here. Not a ton of ingredients, ton of flavor, that's for sure, and just kind of shows respect to the, to the tuna. All right, so as I'm wrapping this one up here, this looks really good. I just want to encourage you guys, just make as much as you're going to eat, because <clears throat> unlike some other preparations, if you have something like a taco kimchi poke, which is octopus where it's cooked, that's okay, that stays. You know, the, the ahi poke is, it's gonna be good the next day, but it's just different with the oils, the color, the texture. It'll still taste good, but I really encourage you to eat it fresh because that's uh, the best way to eat it. So I hope you enjoy this recipe. Again, Trout with DD Outdoors here at Seaside Market, and hopefully you uh, enjoy the poke.